hello everyone namaste so in this video we will see how we can grab data from the external endpoints so uh, for that purpose we will be using a covid data uh, from the rapid api we will grab those data and show it as a json and based on your use case you can create a pojo and do different uh, business logic on top of that okay so for getting the api from where you can get the data is we will use rapid api you can just go to that platform i will just log out here and you can just sign up it is a free to sign up and you can easily sign up using uh, your google account i already have one so i will just log in so once you are done with the login right uh, you can just search this api you can just go there and search for this covid virus world and india's data you can go and go in here right these all are deprecated because uh, nobody really use it right now but yeah it is good uh, test ground for us right so you can see it will provide us a really good uh, um, place to see all the apis and how we can test it so let's use java right uh, and let's see how the api looks like okay so for using this api we need to first subscribe it right like, let's subscribe it okay uh, it looks fine and let's do subscribe okay now i am subscribed to that particular api let's go to that endpoint again okay now i can even test it so let's click on test endpoint okay now we have the data as well so it will look something like this so uh, these are all the countries and cs critical active cases and so on and so forth so you can create pose on top of that for any kind of business logic but our use case right now here is to get this kind of output right like in our endpoint okay now let's go to the spring initializer let's uh, create a spring boot project so com dot equal let me write covid end point project to get data from for covid for covid let me covid it's fine right uh, yeah it's gradle i want java i want 2.7.6 i want java 11 version i believe 3.0 version requires java 17 but yeah you can use either use gradle or maven let's add the dependency here let's add, add a web dependency as well as add a lombok dependency okay these are the only two that we will be needing i will be generating a var uh, let's name it as covid itself let's save it show in finder let's open it and now open our intelj right so let's through the intelj open the project documents how to let's open the covid okay i trust this project so the first phase of it is done now let let it reload uh, for the uh, all the dependency which is requires let it load it will take few seconds or uh, minute but yeah so in the meantime you, you have see already seen that how the api uh, should look like it should have a url it should have a key it should have a host so please don't try this api key and uh, api host because i will be dis disabling it you can create your own api it is 100 percent free okay and you will get a um, you should use a get request right let me change back to the java anything will work fine so url header should be this and this right okay let's go back here 
uh, it is still building come on build faster okay I will pause it till it's done so that you don't have to wait much okay so build is successful now there so let's let's create a controller here uh, controller is the place where you should always keep your endpoints that you are going to create uh, let's create a package called uh, service where we will do some business logic like calling the external endpoint that we are having uh, let's all uh, okay so let's start with the controller in that controller let's create a COVID controller okay so as you know the controller how you will know that like uh, how the system will know that it is a controller right so uh, as you might be knowing how the spring boot works right this is the entry point of uh, your spring boot application it will check that hey is this having a rest controller or not like uh, annotation or not so rest controller will tell that uh, here you need to come for any kind of endpoint purposes right let's do a request mapping this is uh, basically you can avoid it as well because we are just designing one endpoint but I will tell that like hey you should always uh, have this convention that uh, uh, your class should always have some kind of mapping to it right and let's create a get mapping get mapping for what uh, like uh, suppose to get all country COVID data right we are getting all countries covid data so let's create public response entity and we don't know what kind of output it will be because we have not mapped it so that's why there's a question mark uh, i'm just okay so i can modify a rapid endpoint to get covid data right okay now let's create a service also which will actually call the external endpoint so i will name it like covid service let's tell that like hey it is a service so this annotation will tell that this one is the service now call that final covid service covid service let's create a constructor so that uh, it is always mapped um, okay so let's return what like response entity dot okay if everything works fine now let's uh, go to the covid service dot get all country covid data right let's make it covid data and let's call this method uh, let's create that method in covid service okay i know that we are returning response entity we can do that later but now let's go back again to our endpoint right like uh, so let's see uh, where it went okay let's copy this thing just to see that uh, what we should call and how we should call let me put a comment there put everything in here okay so okay okay we need a url so let's first create a url private static final url i don't want this url to change so let's keep this url in here okay looks fine private uh, static final 
let's keep this thing x rapid api key is equal to this right find out let's make ah sorry this was the spring string and let me put that value again there okay let me make it x rapid api key okay private static final string and i have host right x rapid api host and let me put the host value from here right all the important data that we need is we do have right let me remove this thing now okay now let's let's create a rest template so i want to create a rest template it is the uh, synchronous way of calling the api let me create uh, you can use definitely use web client for asynchronous call but for this uh, uh, for this tutorial we will be using synchronous way okay response entity is the synchronous way so let's create a configure uh, because we need to create a response this template uh, like builder right so we should always do it in a configure package let's create a java class and we should name it as like uh, mm, like suppose rest template config config mm, yeah it's probably fine uh, let's tell the that it is a configuration that we are going to do in here right so let's create a bean bean of what rest template right so public we will be use returning what we will be returning a rest template a rest template and let's create a rest template template builder rest template builder and let's return the value for the rest template builder right so oops. return this template builder dot build so we are returning the rest template now we are going to use this bean in our class right so let's auto wire this and use it private um, we can just use this template uh, it will take the value from there so let's see this template it is taking okay perfect we have the rest template builder now let's call in the try catch block and why i always use try catch is like suppose if we don't know because we are calling the external endpoint right we don't know that what kind of value that we are receiving so it's always better uh, to um, to have it in the try catch so let's uh, log this thing i use sl4j instead of log4j uh, just uh, personal preference uh, log 4 j 2 is um, I'm not using any words yeah so let's log dot error something went wrong while getting value from rapid API right uh, let's see what that error can be and suppose that that error uh, we don't get let's also throw that error whatever the error that we will be getting as response status exception and if you want we can write http status of course internal server error or whatever the um, uh, error that you want i generally use internal server error for most of the cause um, but yeah exception while calling in point of a rapid api for corona and let's also put that thing there uh, like what we are returning and yeah now let's call it in here our 
our goal that we want to do okay so as you have seen as you might have seen i i deleted it but these are the header values right let me go back there again so these are the header values so in the rest template how you are going to use it is using the http header okay so let's create http headers headers is equal to new http headers let's uh, add the values there headers dot set uh, what was the two value x uh, how it was there let's copy this okay let's copy this in here let me remove this so this is the header that we are going to set and we are going to set one more header which is for the host right uh, let me copy it down from here okay perfect so now we have our two header set right let me comment this thing out header value is set now now let's call the endpoint okay get call to the uh, to the rapid rapid api okay uh, we will be expecting response entity uh, suppose uh, we are receiving it in the form of a string suppose response is equal to rest template uh, dot exchange exchange is the way to call the api so if you can see there are multiple ways in which you can call right like so we'll be using url right like url we need then what we need we need http method http method we are calling the get api right and also we are calling http entity with the headers right let's call it with the headers and what else what else yeah we are uh, expecting a response in the form of string right a string dot class let's call it a day okay uh, where it went wrong okay here i need to close this now okay perfect now we will have the response in here now let's log dot response oops log dot info uh, output from a rapid api response dot get body okay let's return that response also response that uh, if you want you can just return uh, like response or get body or uh, however you want to okay so a uh, status or whatever you want you can return it back let me do in this fashion so yeah okay now our endpoint is ready and okay i have not used this so let me use these two otherwise it will be waste you should actually use in this way oops and these values should ideally be in application.properties file like uh, either in application.properties file or in some cloud config okay so how you will use from this prediction config it is simple right like you can use private uh, string some url and you can just use value annotation right uh, and suppose when you use value annotation you can just directly use in this way like suppose uh, covid dot url and you can go to the properties file or yaml file if you are using raml file then uh, covid and then use url and then keep the value here but i'm using properties file here right like so i will have to use covid dot url and i will have to put the values in here right but i'm using neither of those so let's let's go back to this properties file 
Uh, let, uh, yeah, everything got deleted, right? Let's and let's start the service. Everything is ready. Okay, now it's started. Let's go to the, our endpoint. Where is it? It is in controller. And let's hope everything is working fine. Let's run this thing. So endpoint is running and we have our output here. So if you're not seeing in here, you can also see your output in here. So we have our output with the country name and so on and so forth. You can use it. So yeah, now if you have any questions, put that in comments. I will write it back and please like, share and subscribe. And yeah, bye.